uh, keynote speaker of the day, Frank Frisbee. Hello, everybody. Um, most of you probably already know me already. I'm Frank. Today, I'm going to talk about some of the AI and the AGI. So we're going to go into, uh, from, AGI to, uh, from AI to AGI, we're going to talk about the whole landscape. So if you have any questions, please ask me. Um, we'll try to save them for the end of each section. But if it's something pressing or you want to know a little bit more about it, you can always ask, and I can answer those questions. All right, so um, some of the key takeaways for today. We're going to, am I too loud? Good? OK. Key takeaways today, we're going to learn about AI and AGI. Um, we're going to learn about what's currently built today, um, some of the models that are using today. And we're also going to talk about what it, did, what it means to be a good machine learning engineer. Um, some of you in here are already engineers, so this would be helpful from both the side of programming and from the side of actually engineering. Okay. So as you already have in your notes, you'll see it's going to break down four sections. Um, section one, one is going to be about uh, AI landscape. Section two, or one, two is going to be about advanced models in AI. I'm um, going to go into section 2.1, which is introduction to AGI, which is a field. I mean, we'll get into, actually, how many people here know about AGI? All right, how many people here know about AI? Okay. All right, let's see. Um, and then, and actually building AGI. Okay. So, as far as the AI landscape, and we'll get into that part here, some of the very basic information um, and go into that first part. All right, so we got a hand here about what's AI and AGI, but we're going to go into AI first. AI is this typically a narrow AI. Um, you probably heard it before. AI is a narrow focus or a certain domain of knowledge you want to look at. So it acts the same way as a human being does, right? But for a narrow specific item. So if you're looking at figuring out how many, if it's a car or a dog, vision based, you have a domain based on those specific items. It's not general, it's narrow. And that's what regular AI is for. In typical cases, we'll talk about it in a little bit. AGI, different from AI, is about um, a whole breadth, a general concept of learning something new and never learned before, understanding what that means, and keep building upon that without in any use of people going in and helping it or teaching it or showing it. It learns it on its own. This is where the companies now are focused on attention on, on, on AGI. Um, most companies now are using AI to put it into production. But companies like Google and DeepMind, that we'll talk about later on, are focus, focusing attention on AGI. All right, so what I am not. Now, you guys don't know about AI much, but if you guys know who about some of these top leaders are, um, Yashua Benjo, Dennis um, Hassidis, can't get the name right, Ben Gortzel or Ray Kurzweil, if you ever heard of these names before, these guys are in the AI field. I am not them. So just be mindful of that. So if I talk about things today, I'm going to talk about things that I know from AI. All right, so misconception of AI, a lot of people think it's just statistics. I had a guy talk to me the other day about statistics and say, AI is just stats. No. Um, stat is part of it, but there's a lot of deterministic parts of it that is not statistics. We'll get into that later on as well. So we look down from this bubble. Um, AI is just a top field. Then there's machine learning, which is what the majority of people are working on. Um, and then there's deep learning, and that's the part where it gets real uh, specific of using artificial neural networks, which you've probably heard of before. We'll get into that later. All right, so some of the things of the timeline of AI, if you look over there on the right-hand side, you'll see from the 40s, this is when it kind of when it started, all up to, to basically now. Back then, they were just making computers, and they were doing rule based and they thought that was AI. Hey, if, if then statements, that's AI. No, it wasn't, but it was good for at the time. Um, over time, it went down to computer vision, robotics, and then finally now until we have deep learning, and people are trying to move away from that and go into deep um, AGI. So the big three parts here is computer vision, natural language processing, and robotics. I particularly like Natural language, natural language processing, that's my field of AI. I'm not really into the whole vision or the robotics um, because I just don't have time to write, build machines and I don't have time to do just vision. Um, but words, text, um, understanding, that kind of knowledge is kind of things that I like to put my hands on. All right. 
So AI in the past, um, like I said before, scripted, if-then statements, not so great. Um, current AI is where we are now. That is where we go into the whole deep learning, um, artificial neural networks, a lot of re regression, um, and we'll get into some of those models as well in a little bit. And in the future, AGI. This is where you want to put your money on, because this is where the companies are going to spend a lot of time building these machines. Um, and, be, and then the future of that is ASI, which is artificial superintelligence, which is even further beyond AGI. OK, so what industries are impacted by AI? Everything. But I could just say here's a few. Uh, transportation, manufacturing, healthcare, education, media, and customer service. You probably work in one of these fields somewhere in some way. Um, technology, but technology is kind of implicit. All right, so companies in the AI lead. OpenAI, if you heard of this, they are focused on building huge models. Um, sponsored by Elon Musk, but Sam Alton is the CEO of that company. Um, DeepMind, which you saw Demis Hassavis is his name, um, is doing DeepMind, who what Google bought, and they have a struggle now between the two of them. Um, Google's done their own thing se separately from DeepMind, but you'll see that later. And there's other small companies, Sherpa and Clarify, which I don't know too much about, but they are also trying to be in the lead as well. All right, so AI wars. Um, China has put out initiative for 2030, I think it is, or 2025, between that time frame. They want to be the dominating com country in the world to have AGI. Um, they want to put America behind. So there's that big thing going on. We want to make sure, however that works, it's, it's, it's going to be that uh, America versus China, which it is now, but there's a lot of other countries in, mixed in. Beyond that, there's also AI wars between companies. Um, they are trying to do whatever they can to take in people. That's why we'll talk about how much they get paid is a significant amount of money. All right, so personally, um, the, the, the impact of API, no, no, not API, AGI, um, it's my respect, as Marina said earlier, is working on mental models so that continuously acts on your behalf so that when you're not focused on things, it provides you solutions to things. So if I was thinking about something and I couldn't find a solution to it, um, the AGI has the ability to work in a domain using the internet and constantly figuring out different probable solutions and then says, okay, this might be the best scenario for you. And I come back to it later on and say, hey, what's the scenario? Here you go, here's the answer, try this out. It should give me probably one of the best results because it's acting on my behalf. So that's why I'm looking at it. All right. Can I talk about that already? Move on. All right, so machine level from a high level use, I told you before, um, artificial intelligence over here, but you have machine learning, natural language processing, expert systems, vision, speech, which is what well, a lot of things you use in your phone now. Um, but there's also planning and robotics. People don't talk about that much. Um, planning is probably one of the big parts that's going to be used in AGI because it needs to have the concept of understanding and planning and figuring things out. So we're going from that. Um, applications, we kind of went over this a little bit, every field. So if you work in some field, if you work, period, um, you're probably one of these things up here, and it will affect you some way. So it's good to learn it. Uh, let's take a look here. Um, I went over this already. Uh, basically, the ultimate reason why people use AI is because it saves money and time. Um, you can save a significant amount of time. Um, I actually had a, a friend who uh, worked on AI. Well, actually, he, has, you know, he didn't work on AI. He is a teacher, he's a TA, and he has taken 100 hours to grade papers because he had a class of 300. And he asked me, he said, man, I wish there was a way that I can just get this done a lot faster. And I said, yeah, well, if you had a good sample size of your data, we can run this through, and for future settings, you can do it in 10 minutes. Instead of spending 100 hours, you save one the school a lot of money, even though they probably don't care. But it also saves you a lot of time, so you can focus on things you want to focus on versus actually spending all the time on grading papers. Um, move forward. So three types of positions. There is the data scientist, there's a machine learning engineer, and there is the infamous researcher. Data scientist makes, you know, probably 110. The machine learning engineer makes roughly 145 because they're actually the frontliners to production. Um, and then there is the uh, PhD level 
uh, people who make the algorithms, write the white papers that come up with new ideas that actually be implemented in companies, that makes the big money, somewhere between 250 to a million dollars, depending on DeepMind's level of work. So data scientists, um, I'm sure you're familiar with it, but it's people who work mainly on mathematics, um, high level of statistics, usually have a PhD level, but sometimes masters, and they have some level of programming, typically in R or Python, something like that, to get their job done, but they're not too super robust in programming. And then this is the roadmap for a data scientist. You can see it's, <laughs> it's a lot. Straightforward. Yeah, so <laughs> there is, uh, there's a lot to do. That's why it takes about five, six, seven years just to really get rooted in this, in this field because one, things are changing, and then two, there's a lot of material here that you have to learn. Programming, statistics, big data, You've heard all these big term words before if you uh, work in the space. Uh, all right, so machine learning engineer, same concept, but this person here works directly in production. Like this person takes whatever the data scientist does and push it right into production. They build the code out. They're actually really good at programming. Um, and they actually use TensorFlow or these different um, uh, libraries and put them into production. Right. Now the AGI researcher, which is kind of what we got going on now, the reason why I say AGI versus AI, because right now the researchers are working on AGI. Um, and coming up with the models to build this is making people this kind of money. And DeepMind is probably the one who's focusing on that the most. And OpenAI just kind of came into the lead lately. Um, that's another company we'll get into later. Can I ask what bird is? What um, Bidirectional. Um, a bidirectional model for uh, transformers. And we'll talk about that also. Typical job requirements. Um, you'll get into Java, Python, and SQL. And that's for typical for a PhD. You need all those levels and also a strong level of mathematics, typically PhD level math, so all the uh, differential equations and stuff like that. You need to learn that as well. All right. And this just goes on and on and on, so I don't need to go into all of that. All right. So, different application of AI. I mentioned before, ANI is what they're doing now, um, AGI, and then ASI. ANI is currently what we're doing, which most of you, if you worked in the AI field now, it's what you're doing now. AGI is the next frontier, and I would definitely explore working on that, because that's where all the, the big, big cash is, and the thing will be the next 10 to 15 years of work. And then ASI is well beyond that, and most likely they'll say the AGI will build the ASI. <laughs> it's kind of weird, but that's what's gonna happen. Um, now, the difference of the AI, I also mentioned here, is there's reactive, there's no memory, that's the rule based system. Um, there is limited memory, which is kind of what you use artificial uh, neural networks now. They kind of have weights in them that allows you to have retain some kind of memory. And then there is theory of mind, which is the next level of AGI, or they're working on, which is understanding about something over a long period of time. And then last of all, self-awareness, which is probably where it gets towards AGI and ASI. Okay, so different uh, types of learning. Um, there's supervised, unsupervised, and reinforcement learning. Um, the supervised learning is being able to give me a certain data set with a certain output. This is, I, I know the expected behavior from this. This allowed me to understand in between how to get there, not train on that data. So a teacher says, here's a math problem, solve it. You solved it, teacher says it's wrong, um, it's supposed to be um, 19. You say, okay, thank you, I'll go back and try it again with a different problem. That would be supervised learning. Um, unsupervised learning is, I have no idea if I'm right or wrong, but over a long set of data, Hopefully, I'll get to the point where it is correct. And that will be supervised or unsupervised learning. Reinforcement learning is where a lot of AI is working on, and that's specifically working on um, reward systems. So, it, like a kid, for example, if you have a little child, if you do something, you give them like a little cookie, they'll do that again. If you reprimand a kid, they won't do it again. That is kind of how AI works. system or penalize the system 
heavily for making a bad prediction and you yes. support it. Okay. Yeah. Same, Same concept. So typically in, um, in AI, towards the end, they'll do reinforcement learning with adjusting the weights and then it back propagates throughout the system. Yeah, so some real world issues working with deep learning. Um, no networks or black boxes. So we'll get into the whole intrinsic concept of once it learns something, it converts it into an encoding. And at that point, it can no longer understand it. So you can't get out of it what you put in. It converts it. And no longer is something you understand because it's all nothing but matrices and vectors at that point. So for someone to understand why did it make a certain decision, it doesn't actually know. Um, so you have to kind of have a system to work on this. Moving forward. 